Welcome to your Mercury retrograde in Aquarius practice. And the name I have given for this practice is Lunar Hangover. So this is a practice that you can do whenever you're feeling hungover from anything. So hangovers are not just from alcohol or um, other substances. It can be from food, it can be from work, it can be from just stress in general. So this is really a practice to reboot, reset, um, and to shift perspective. So to go from a place of being uh, perhaps tired and heavy to being um, maybe relaxed. I like to say that it cultivates a passive energy, like where you feel actually relaxed when you're relaxing instead of just um, heavy when you're relaxing or, um, you know, there's, there's ways that we kind of like collapse on a couch and we're not fully relaxed. We're just exhausted, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you're going to begin with your legs up the wall. Your sits bones pressing into the wall, your hips sinking down into the earth. And you want a piece of wall that is large enough that you can bring your legs out wide at some point. But we're gonna start with the legs straight up, flexing the toes back toward the face. And really find a place, a sweet spot in the back of the leg where you're feeling a bit of an opening, a bit of a stretch, and then wiggle the toes and release the trying. So release the um, intense um, trying or striving to stretch and just allow the wall to hold you. And this practice is really lovely because not only do we have the support of the earth, but we have the additional support of the wall. So there's certain postures where maybe we would normally hold that posture with our abs or with our arms or um, you know with a little bit more effort where the wall will come in and help us and hold us here so bringing your arms out wide to the t palms face up closing the eyes softening the space between the eyebrows making it receptive and letting the backs of the hands sink into the earth. And maybe you find that you're not close enough to the wall, that there's some space between your legs and the wall. You can place a folded or rolled up blanket underneath the, um, the bum to, to help facilitate a closer relationship with the wall. And I've chosen this practice for Mercury retrograde because of the powerful shift in perspective that a Mercury retrograde affords us really mirrors what this posture, legs at the wall, does for our body and our mind. So with your legs up the wall, the blood begins to flow in the opposite direction. So you may start to experience settling down from the bottoms of the feet and through the ankles. And this settling sensation, we can trace it as it moves down. We can trace its progress and allow it to relax us more and more as it travels down. And the meditation I like to have accompany this practice involves us moving through our day from end to beginning. So I'll be guiding you through that later. 
But for right now, I invite you to really focus in on your breath, filling the belly, the ribs, and the chest, and really feel your body expand like you're blowing up a balloon. And on your exhale, release more surrender into the earth. And the more we can cultivate the surrender in our bodies, we can start to see the parallel in our mind, knowing that there are certain things we cannot manipulate or control. This last year has certainly taught us that there are many things that are much greater than we are. Aquarius shows us and teaches us that there are so many things beyond us. And so as we surrender to our breath, we surrender our bodies to the support of the ground, to the earth and to the wall, which is made of the material and is an extension of the earth. You are very held in this space and in this practice. And you may feel that settling sensation travel down through the knees. And the more it travels down the legs, you get the sense that there is a reversal of some of the stresses of being vertical, the stresses of the standard everyday way of thinking and being. you are now able to explore being from a different perspective. Some people experience that this, this as what they didn't know they needed. And so allowing these things to come in all of your thoughts and observations. And bring your right hand to your heart space, left hand to the belly. If you don't feel comfortable um, with this physical gesture, just imagining in your mind's eye that you are enacting this physically. And breathing deeply, feeling the left hand rise and fall with the breath. You see under your left palm, a yellow light glowing. And with each breath, this yellow light glows brighter, clearer. Welcome this warmth. And maybe you begin to notice from this settling sensation down the legs that there's some part of your body that feels dull. And that warm yellow light out through the body with the breath. So if you want it to go to your toes, inhale all the way up to the toes. And 
And it may take more effort to send that yellow light up to the toes. But perhaps in the attempt, something is learned, something is shown. So taking this time to breathe with the yellow, warm light of your inner sun. And when you're ready, bring your awareness to your right palm. Feeling for your heartbeat. And if you can't feel it, that's okay. Know that it is the act of reaching for it or looking for it with the intention that is most important. And under your right palm, you begin to see a green light glowing bright. And this green light glows brighter with every beat, with every breath. Begin to see in your mind's eye a clearing. Sometimes I see a film or a crusty exterior breaking off from the edges and that light coming out through the cracks and finally consuming anything that was blocking the heart space. And as with all energy work, this is something we can do in our practice. And it may not last, but the memory endures. And so we can always return to this feeling of breaking apart anything that is limiting the heart and allowing it to glow brighter and brighter. And it begins to travel through our veins. The heart pumps this green light out through the veins to the tip of your nose, to your heels, your knees, your elbows and neck. This heart energy is traveling. With love and connection. Throughout your body. And know that you have the option to follow my voice, but you also have the option to go your own way and to do your own work. Asking that whatever is for you now be able to move through, through you and to you with ease and grace.
And you may now start to observe yourself from above. Observe yourself with the colors of this radiant, warm yellow light with streams of green running through it. And you will see that the yellow coats and protects this green light. That the strength and the warmth of the solar plexus energy protects the flow of love and connection. Start to point and flex the feet. Perhaps you hold with your toes pointed, feeling that stretch, inviting movement into the toes. If you were to practice legs up the wall by yourself at home, I recommend that you practice at least until that settling sensation comes down into your hips. And we'll move to our second posture, still legs up the wall, bringing your legs out wide. As far as they'll go, if you're extremely flexible, they may go too far. So you'll want to bring supports in under the sides of the legs. Um, or if you feel that you need those supports. So it could be blocks or pillows. Um, but here you wanna keep the backs of your legs still flush with the wall. Flex your toes back toward the face, allowing the heels to Lightly dig into the wall. Really, it's the same thing. They're holding your place. And then wiggle the toes to release tension throughout the legs. And you'll be holding here, so make sure that you are comfortable enough. Finding your edge and sticking with it. So this isn't technically a restorative practice. There is still meeting that edge. Not every position is 100% um, comfortable. <laughs> and so allowing yourself to find this position. Taking up space on your wall and begin to reach your arms up over head. So take a nice big stretch here, reach out through each fingertip. And then from this position, you'll begin to tap your thumb to each finger. 
and for a breath each. So we'll go thumb to index finger. And with your eyes closed, allow yourself to feel or understand the physiological or mental response to this thumb to index finger connection. And it may not come in strongly with the first connection. We'll move a deep breath in, move to the middle finger. Notice what thoughts, feelings, or body parts are connected to this for you. Moving to the ring finger, deep breath in. And then finally, the pinky finger touches the thumb. And noticing what happens there. So you're going to select from what you observed. And if you need to go through that sequence again to find out, you're welcome to do that as many times as you need to, to explore which finger to finger connection is needed. Perhaps there are two that are crying out. So um, for me, it's my in, uh, ring finger and pinky finger connected to my thumb because both were really speaking loudly. And you'll know because there will be a big response and maybe an uncomfortable emotional uprising in the body or the mind. And you really wanna aim for that. So connect your thumb to whatever fingers are calling to you at this time. And again, you're always welcome to go your own way or follow the sound of my voice. Mercury is a trickster god from the Roman pantheon. You may think of Gwydion from the Welsh Mabinogion or Loki um, from Norse mythology as other examples of, or Hermes as other examples of trickster gods. And so he really likes mind games. So these exercises are, if they're not for you at this time, they're not for you at this time. And you can always request a recording of this class. Okay, so we're going to start bringing our awareness to our right foot. And at the sole of your right foot are all of the identifiable issues that are raised from the connection of your fingers. So your elbows are bent overhead and you've connected your fingers in whatever position. Coming to the sole of your right foot, there is an orb. And this glowing orb represents all of those tricky energies, all of those grievances that are being aired in your body, mind, and spirit at this time, whatever that connection is. So it could be anger, frustration, sadness, jealousy, guilt, whatever it is for you, whatever is coming up. Exists within that orb. And we're going to start to pull that energy in through the feet. So a concentrated stream of those thoughts and ideas, uncomfortable thoughts and ideas.
noticing any memories or automatic thoughts that are associated with these things. As you pull that energy in through the leg, what does it feel like to pull it in through the leg? And know that as it goes down one side, it will then travel up the other side. So we're going to transmute this energy, sending it down one leg, observing everything that's associated with it. And to send it back up the other side, we look at the opposite. So for instance, what is the opposite of guilt? What is the opposite of anger? All concepts are born as a whole and then they split into two, into oppositions. And so in one side, we receive our grievances and on the other, we begin to draw whatever opposes them up through the opposite leg. In through the right, up through the left. How does it feel up the left leg? And you begin to see a second orb develop at the sole of your left foot. And this energy represents or is a combination of all of those oppositions you've collected. And as this energy is drawn in through the sole of your foot, You begin to connect it to people, places, or things that trigger these emotions in you. So if it's happiness, what person, place, or thing makes you happy? If it's confidence, maybe even calling on memories of a time when you felt confident calling on memories where you felt connected, loved, whatever it is, and draw that energy down the leg. And feel that leg open up, lighter and brighter as that energy draws down the leg. And we know that that energy must go up the other side. And this is where we must do the most work. Creating new memories, new ways of bringing the energy from the left all the way up to the sole of the foot on the right. This is where we see the oppositions face to face. When I feel anger, 
it squares off with patience and what is created is this energy that runs up the right leg lighter freer and more spacious is the right leg as you send this energy up to the sole of the foot. Integrating right and left, masculine and feminine, thinking and feeling. Embracing each as the same. Rest here. And if your mind made that exercise too complicated, perhaps just assign a color and watch those orbs bounce from right to left and left to right, creating that V. And as you rest in this posture, in some silence for some time. Connect with your breath and the space between your eyebrows and allow whatever visions are needed at this time to come through. You'll start to bring awareness into your toes, wiggling the toes, pointing and flexing the feet. And bring the legs back to center. Begin to connect the soles of the feet and bring the knees out wide. So this is um, on the floor. It would be a butterfly position. Um, if you need support in any way, like anything underneath the thighs, maybe some blocks. You don't have to bring your feet super close to your bum. You can keep them further away. We just wanna connect the soles of the feet together and bring the knees toward the wall. And we won't be in this posture as long as we were in the other ones, but we will be holding. And I invite you to either interlace your fingers above your head or to hook fingers together. So you want there to be a connection up overhead, rolling the shoulders back, tucking the chin in toward the chest for a nice long neck. 
And if at any time as we move through, you have something underneath the hips and it doesn't work, just take it out, come back into the posture, meet us back in the posture. Another option here is to, um, again, if you wanna use some sort of binding method for the feet, that's also an option or for the ankles. And this next exercise or this next um, energy experience is one that we do in classes all the time. It's a standard recharge your batteries practice to show us the power of the solar plexus and the heart to rejuvenate to recharge us when maybe we've given too much and we need to bring it into ourselves. So I invite you now to bring your awareness back to that cauldron of healing, the heart and solar plexus chakra, chakras. And imagine that they have connected together with a silver thread that moves in through the right and out through the left. A circle that connects the two and sends the energy of one into the other. And this energy begins to swirl at your center. So just from your heart space to the top of your belly. And perhaps you see this in colors or the energy is swirling so quickly that it looks like a pale green light. And once it is raised enough power and enough energy as you feed it with your breath, you will see it shoot down the right leg, move through the connection of the feet up the left leg, cross back through this energy center, traveling up the right arm. The hands connected, send it down through the left arm. And again, through that power center and down through the right leg, up the left, up the right arm, down the left. Creating this infinity symbol in your body. Perhaps you see this as streams of light or you simply feel it, the current running and perhaps it moves so quickly that you cannot even see the movement. You just experience an illuminated infinity symbol across the body or the number eight. And here he will rest and recharge, connecting with your breath, connecting with this vital, energizing light.
Keep the right knee bent and send the left leg up long, creating a tree posture on the wall, flexing the left toes back toward the face, wiggling the toes and releasing tension. You may keep your hands together or find a different expression for your arms that suits your shoulders and your chest. And take some time here to clear the mind and rest. Start to bend the left knee, reconnecting the feet, and then send the right leg up long, keeping the left knee bent, creating a tree posture on this side. Perhaps you shift the position of your arms. If that feels right. And the beauty and advantage of doing this with the wall is that you can bring your foot to where your knee is. So there are more options available than there are when we're standing. So exploring what works for you tonight. And this is a time to clear the mind, to cleanse the palate, if you will. So relax into your breath.
And when you're ready, bring both legs up the wall. Shake them out, point and flex the toes, the feet, wiggle the toes. And for this next posture, you'll cross your right leg over the left. The knees will be stacked as you send your left foot over toward the right hip and your right foot over toward the left hip. So this is called cow face. The, you want to keep the knees at center and your feet going out like you're tying a knot in your body. So your left foot goes over toward the right, the right foot goes over to the left. You can guide the feet with the hands and plant the outside edge of the foot onto the wall. So this is where the wall can hold you in place and you can let go of holding onto the feet once you've drawn them apart. So I am going to take a moment and straight on my mat without using a wall. If you're confused about what's happening here. So the right leg crosses over the left, the left foot comes down, the right foot comes down, and then plant the outside edges of the feet on the wall. And this will be potentially very intense in the right hip. So just get yourself into that position. And then bring your hands together. And as you're doing this, as you're creating warmth between the palms. See in your mind's eye a white light coming in through the crown of the head and channeling directly into your palms. So not only are you creating warmth here, but you have this white light energy building around the palms. And then place your hands on your hip. Maybe it's one hand, maybe you place a hand wherever it's needed. So maybe you need it in your stomach today, maybe you need it on your knee, wherever you need some of this healing energy. And feel it absorb through the skin into the muscles, relaxing and releasing tension. Move your jaw from side to side, releasing tension there as well. The jaw and the hips are deeply connected. And when you're ready, we're going to do that again with the palms. So rubbing the palms together, closing the eyes, and you have that channel of light coming in through the crown of the head. You're going to connect now with the cauldron of healing. So that swirling energy between the heart and the solar plexus and feel that energy move into your palms. 
So your palms light up with the energy of your heart and your solar plexus. And when you're ready, once again, place your palms somewhere on your body. Maybe it's over your eye, wherever you need that healing. You have two hands, so you have two places you can serve. Feeling that energy absorb. And maybe you repeat this, or perhaps you simply relax into your posture. And when you're ready, you'll begin to bring the legs up long, maybe slapping the legs or moving them, jiggling them, pointing and flexing the feet, wiggling the toes, whatever you need to do to feel that blood pumping through the legs again. And then you'll switch sides. So bringing the left leg over top of the right, Crossing at the knees, bringing the feet to the wall. Turning the arch of the foot toward you. So allowing the outside edge of the foot to really hold you in place. Wiggle the toes to release tension in the knees. And settle into your breath. Check your jaw. Maybe move it from side to side, releasing that tension, letting the tongue become heavy. And bringing your awareness to your mind's eye, bringing your palms together and creating that warmth. Visualize the white light coming in through the crown of your head and straight to your palms. And when your hands are charged up enough, placing them somewhere on the body that you feel needs healing. And when you feel the work there is complete, bringing the hands together again. 
this time connecting that white light into the cauldron. Seeing that light green, green yellow lights glow out and into your hands, feel them charge up with the power of your heart and your solar plexus. And then place your hands wherever you need that energy. Maybe it's the ankles, maybe it's the ears. Wherever you need it. Perhaps it's on the hip that is now opening. And once you feel it's time to release, allowing yourself to rest here, focusing on your breath. And when you're ready, you'll bring your legs up long. And it's time to move away from the wall. So you'll start to walk using your shoulder blades. So try not to push off from the wall. You want to walk away from the wall just using your back muscles. This may feel a bit like a walrus flopping on a beach. That's how I always feel, <laughs> or an inchworm. But it's a nice way to break up any tension in the back. And so doing this until you've cleared the wall and you can lie flat on your back. And once you've reached that position with your flat back, walk your feet toward your hips and pick your hips up, place them to the left side of your mat. Hips go left, knees are going to go all the way over to the right side, coming into a twist. Scoop up the left shoulder blade, place it back down, making space grounding from fingertip to fingertip across the back body. If you'd like to place a folded blanket between the knees, that would be really beautiful. Um, particularly for women, we have that um, wider hips. And so the blanket between the knees is more comfortable. And it just allows us to relax deeper into the posture. Perhaps you want something a little bit more intense. You can start to draw the, the top knee in toward the chest. Or you can rest where you are.
when you're ready, begin to bring yourself back to center. If you had twisted your neck, bringing your head back first and then the knees, resting here with your arms at your sides, palms grounded, grounding your lower back into the earth. Savor this space between twists. This is my favorite moment of practice. <laughs> and when you're ready, shifting your hips to the right side of your mat, drawing the knees in toward the chest and letting them fall over to the left side. Again, you can use support underneath the knees or in between, making yourself comfortable so that you can Drop in a little bit deeper. Taking a really passive approach to this twist, you can always deepen with the breath or you can draw the top knee in toward the chest and see how that feels for you. When you're ready, bring yourself back to center, unwinding, maybe taking a rolled up blanket or a bolster and placing it under the thighs or knees. Try to stay low to the ground if you, as you make this transition. And then sending the legs out long, arms to your sides, palms face up for corpse. Welcome to the death portion of your rebirth. And this is a time to completely surrender. Let all the energies and the blood and the breath flow freely throughout your body without trying to change or alter them. The rhythm of your breath becomes natural Whatever it is, it is.
If your mind wanders, come back to center. This is a time of neither sleep nor wakefulness. And so if there are guides or energies or entities in this liminal space that wish to communicate with you, or perhaps it's your higher self, your future or past self coming in with messages. Trust that inner guidance. This is a time of integration, rebuilding, redirecting, all themes of a Mercury retrograde, reset, renew, reconfigure. Whatever is coming for you, I wish you all the best. When you're ready, begin to bring awareness back into the hands and feet. If you would like to skip this process as you are watching, feel free to do so. But I ask that you go through this sequence and honor this sequence when you come out in your own time. So if you are following along with me, then you'll continue to bring movements into the body, moving the head from ear to ear, maybe massaging the back of the skull as you go. Maybe you stand your feet on the floor, mat distance apart, and rock the knees from side to side. Let them tip right to left, to right to left. And wakening the body. Turn over onto your right side into the fetal position and take a moment of gratitude. Finding whatever it is that you are grateful for today. Let that fill your heart space and travel out with the pulse and with the breath and exercise you are an expert at at this point. At the very least, you repeat that word to yourself and just know that it's there. And when you're ready, pressing into your palm and bringing yourself up to seated, finding a comfortable seat. So if you are still reclined, that's okay. I'll just ask you to, um, when we turn our palms forward, that you turn your palms up and receive that way. So for those of you who are seated, we'll draw the shoulders up to the ears, nice and tight. And this represents overthinking, getting in our mind. And when we release, it's the heart. <sighs> Exhale, inhale. So we're in our head, we're tight, we're anxious, we're overthinking, and then we release. <sighs> 
One more time. <sighs> Wonderful. And then bringing your arms to your sides, palms face forward. And we visualize ourselves now standing in a great circle, a circle of people both known and unknown. Energies, entities, and figures known and unknown. And perhaps we send out images around the circle of people we know, people we feel would benefit from the energy of connection. Remembering that we do not even need to like someone in order to wish for them a deeper feeling of connection. And so seeing or naming those people as you begin to feel yourself here in this circle. And you now receive through your palms a feeling of connection from the root that connects us all in the song that sings the universe. As a conduit for both, we feel and receive this energy through our palms, surging up our arms into our heart space into that swirling vortex of healing, that cauldron of healing we have discovered for ourselves tonight. And feeling our bodies fill with this energy of connection, kindness, compassion, community, empathy, sympathy, support, all of the ways in which we are not alone. We feel and receive this energy, this gratitude. And now, as we are full, we receive through the right and give through the left. An unending flow around the circle. We send out what we receive and we receive what we give without needing to hold any back or to disrupt the flow. Stand in this flow and feel this beautiful energy move through you. Feeling the truth of the mind, body, spirit connection. The whole holistic being that you are, everything you need is always already inside of you. Draw your hands to your heart, bow your head to your chest. Thank you so much for joining me in this practice, always.